All right. In this one, we're going to model the Baku White City project. It's an office building proposed by ADEC, the Azerbaijan development company, and it actually just got an award for office architecture. Really cool project and a great one to practice 3D modeling in Rhino. If you're new here, this is part of our Rhino architectural modeling series, where we model a variety of real architectural projects. And as always, every command used will appear at the top of the screen, so it's easy to follow along. We've got some interesting balconies here. They stagger as they go up, creating these layered balcony spaces, and at the same time giving this nice organic flow to the facade. But best approach here is to model the entire massing using SubD. Then we'll go in and build out the floors, balconies, and the curtain panels. Looking at the psych plane, you'll notice the overall form has this curved. We're going to start from this. So let's expand the top view and sketch out our base curve. As for units, I'm using meters here. You can just type units in the command bar and switch it to meters, or whatever works best for you. We're not aiming for super precise real-world dimensions. It's more about experimenting the design and getting the proportions to feel balanced and believable. We'll start with a NURBS curve. Let's make it roughly 100 meters wide. Select the middle control point and drag it to adjust the curvature. One control point isn't enough to shake it well, so we'll rebuild the curve. Set the point count to around nine and make sure to check the make sub D friendly option. That'll help later when we extrude it and give us sub D results. Now feel free to play around with the control points. Adjusting them will control how the overall shape turns out in the end. All right. Now we're gonna go back and forth between perspective top, front, that kind of thing. I'll expand the view layout here and switch to the perspective view. We're gonna make our massing based on this curve. So let's extrude this curve upward somewhere around 45 to 46 meters. That's enough for a 10 story building. We're gonna smooth out the corners now, but before that we need more resolution to work with. So hold down control plus shift, click the first and last edge, then double click in between to select the full loop. Now insert an edge right in the middle of that loop. Again, control plus shift, double click to select the new loop and then bevel it. I've assigned a shortcut for bevel, control plus B. You can also type it in if that's easier. Set the segment count to five. That should give us enough holding edges. Now we just need to slide those corner vertices to round them off. So in the command bar, type an asterisk and then slide. That lets you repeat the command each time. For example, I can select this edge here and slide it over. When I finish, it automatically runs the same command again. So I can just keep going. Basically, you're sliding the vertices left and right to smooth out the corners. And if the direction feels flipped, you can always switch it from across to along, depending on how you wanna move it. Now for this side, we're gonna make it a straight incline instead of curving outward. So I'm gonna create a polyline that slopes up slightly. We'll use that line as a guide. So I'll select the vertices and slide them up to match the new guide curve we just drew. We don't need those guide curves, type cell curve and hide the rest so we can work cleaner. Looking back at the reference, the roof part is a bit higher. So hold control plus shift, grab the top edges and pull them up slightly. That'll round out the top more. You can also select individual vertices and move them up or down to make the transition smoother. That looks good for our base geometry. Next, we're gonna give it some volume and turn it into more of a solid form. Select the sub D and run offset sub D. We'll stick with the default thickness of one ear. Make sure solid is enabled and both side to yes. Now, let's add one more layer of thickness. Go to the sub D tools, run cell faces to boundary, and select the sub D. We want to increase it sideways. So let's deselect the border faces. Hold Ctrl plus shift, double click one of the faces. It will automatically deselect the others. Then switch to top view and run extrude sub D. Let's extrude it by around 21 meters. Then once again, select the full sub D and run remove crease to get rid of all hard edges. Back in perspective view, you can start to see the mass in taking shape. 
Now we'll adjust the transitions a bit more. Instead of soft little bevels, we'll make the changes more noticeable. Hold Ctrl plus Shift, select the edges. Here, I want to align the gumball to the object, so I'll go over to Gumball and switch it to Object Mode. Now we can scale the selected edges toward their relative center. I'm going to repeat that process a few times, just selecting edges and scaling them to make the transitions cleaner. I'll speed it up a bit here. It's basically just sculpting the base by scaling and tweaking. This part is all about experimentation. You can toggle between Sub-D display types and check how the surface is looking. All right, that's it for the base form. Now let's move on to the floor slabs and balconies. Let's switch to the front view and draw a polyline to mark the ground level. We'll make copies of that line going upward. Hold Shift and press Tab to lock the direction in Z and set the height to around 4.7 meters. Now enable Use Last Direction use last distance, and from last point, set all of them to yes. Then just click multiple times to place repeated copies going upward. We'll select them all and move them down while holding the Alt key. That way, it makes a copy as we move. Let's drop it down by about 3.2 meters. That'll define the ceiling to top floor slab thickness. Now switch back to the perspective view. Let's move those lines back away from the building we'll use them to slice through the massing. To do that, we first need to convert the sub-D into a poly surface. So type two NURBS, then hide the original sub-D for now. Now just select the cut icon on the, gum on the gumball and drag it to slice into the form. We'll select one slice, leave one in between, select the rest and delete them like so. So we can see how it's looking. So far, so good. Next, we're going to model the vertical separation you see between the left and right sides in the reference project. Use Show Selected to bring back the massing and those earlier base curves. To make sure this curve fully covers the massing, I'm gonna extend the base curves from both ends to span the full width. Sometimes when you extend curves, they can create invisible sharp kinks, which could mess up the extrusion. To avoid that, we'll rebuild the curve. A point count of 12 should be enough. Move the curve down a little to make sure it covers the massing, then extrude it upward until it covers the entire sub-D. Let's give that extrusion some thickness using offset RF. Enable solid, turn on both sides and set the thickness to two meters. Actually, that seems too thick. Let's go with 1.5 meters instead. We'll split this new shape using the sub-D. Run Boolean Split, select the sub-D as the cutting object, and then hide the extended part and the sub-D. Now we've got that separation, just like in the reference. If your viewport feels too cluttered with wireframes, you can go to Object Properties and uncheck Surface ISO Curve to clean things up. If you look at the reference again, you'll notice recessed areas in each balcony, kind of like floor by floor indents. Let's create that. So we can use each floor as a guide and just extrude the profile downward. And for that, we'll use inset. Go ahead and select one of the floors. The default one meter thickness should work fine. Now hold down control and shift, select the new inset faces and extrude them down about 1.4 meters. All right, in rendered view, you can clearly see that the floors are sitting slightly below the facade. We want to apply that same effect across all the floors. So I'm going to speed this part up a bit. Basically, just repeat the same process. Use inset on all the faces, then hold down control plus shift and select the newly created inset faces. Extrude them down the same way we did before around 1.4 meters. All right, next up, we're going to model the areas for our curtain panel system. We can duplicate edges from the previous surfaces and extrude them to build a base surface. So first I'll run dup edge, double click to grab the full edge loop and press enter. While the curves are still selected, run join, since they might come in as separate segments. 
set the distance to 1.5 meters and click inside to define the direction. Now run cell last to grab that last curve and extrude it downward. That's gonna be our base surface for placing the curtain panels. Looks good so far. Now let's repeat the same logic on the remaining floors. I'll speed this part up a bit. Use up edge again, grab the edge borders for each floor, hit enter and join the curves. This time we'll use offset multiple, which lets us offset all those curves at once. Now use cell last again to grab the new curves and extrude them down, just like we get on the top floor. All right, now I'm gonna show you a little grasshopper trick for carving these recessed roof terraces, those smooth cutouts that blend each facade into the central bridge. Let's take a look at how we can do that. First, let's make a copy of our building. Hold down Alt, click on the, the Y direction and type in negative 125. That'll copy the building 125 meters away. Now we'll run Boolean Union. That combines everything into one single solid geometry. If the Boolean fails, just select smaller portions of the floors and run the command again. Next, we'll use Dup Edge to extract the borders we want to blend between the two sides. Here's a simple grasshopper script you can use to create those blends. I don't think this one is hard to copy. So go ahead and take a screenshot. Or if you want to support the channel, you can download the full file on Patreon. At the start of the script, you'll see a curve input, right click it, choose set multiple curves, and select the edge curves from both sides, the ones you want to blend. Then go all the way to the end of the script, right click and choose bake. And that's it. Just repeat the same steps for each floor you want to create this blend area, and you'll start seeing something like this. Nice. And that's pretty much it for this building. If you found this helpful, give it a like. It really helps us know what to make next. There's also a full playlist right here with more tutorials like this one. Check it out, and I'll see you there.